Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode. Today I'm bringing you this little camera, nice little case. That needs um, needs treatment with the uh, the neat sweat oil. It's getting a little bit uh, sort of bristly and dry. But this is a Mamiya, a Mamiya camera dating from 19, uh, 1962. This is a Mamiya. E. E. Merit. Let's take it out of this case and I'll give you a show of it. Won't be needing that at the moment. Okay, and there you can see the front of the camera. So it was made by Mamiya. E. E. It's a Merit, and there is a Merit Plus. The Merit Plus is a rangefinder version. This is a zone focusing. This is like the um, entry level basic version. So on the front here we have a flash PC cord, and it's a leaf shuttered camera. Well, most of these rangefinders are. We have the viewfinder up here. This, believe it or not, is the uh, shutter release button down here. It's winded on. You can hear it. And it has selenium cells around the lens. And you can see the lens is a 40mm 2.8. It's a Mamiya Commoner, so it's Mamiya make good lenses. And uh, it is a Seiko Sha shutter that's in this. On the bottom all we have is a tripod bush and a rewind lever there. On the side have nothing. On the back very simple camera there's a viewfinder if you can see through that and it can't focus on it. And this is obviously a film of dance. It's quite a long throw, it goes all the way around to there. Film of dance. Again, nothing on this side. And on the top, we have the, uh, the rewind crank. It pulls up. In normal fashion. We have a cold shoe. I'll leave that out because we're going to put some film in there. Cold shoe. We have a thread for the shutter release so you can use a cable release on that and we have a film counter and this one doesn't count forwards it counts backwards so when you've loaded the film you have to set um, the number of exposures and then it counts down you can't see it but when you get to the end when it gets to zero the word end appears in the viewfinder I don't think you can see it um, but yeah, it says the word end in there, which is quite clever. Apparently, you know, you can still carry on shooting on the last frame. It doesn't stop. You, when you wind on, the film doesn't uh, advance. Um, so you can do multiple exposures on that one if you're not careful. That's obviously why the end shows up in the, in the viewfinder. To open the back... Nice pop open. Remember this camera from 1962, so this camera's 57 years old. And I don't know what the light seal's going to be like. Have a quick look. She's a little bit dusty in there. You can see there's the dry sprockets. There's the take-up spool. And it's got quite a nice, uh, quite a nice take-up spool on there. And there we can see the pressure plate on the back. There's no light sealing. There's a light sealing strip along here. And that is about all there is to see. There's a bit of light proofing material along this side here. So let's pop some film in her. And uh, to explain this camera is a shutter priority camera. Uh, doesn't need batteries because obviously these are selenium cells so they just respond to the sun. So if you look on the top you can see we've got the shutter speeds. So we have a 30th, 
the 60th, 125th and 250. Um, this is for focusing, so we have close-ups, groups and scenes. So there's not a lot of choice in, in, in the focusing of it. That is your, your options. And here we have apertures that we can set manually. So 22, 16, 11, 8, 5.6, 4, 2.8. So I'm going to set that on F22 and the slowest shutter speed. You can have a look and see. Okay, that was quite a small aperture that we saw there. And now I can set it to be wide open at 2.8. Didn't really see the aperture there. But then you're not going to because it's it's wide open, and then finally we have the auto setting, so that determines the uh, the working aperture. Now it can also be part of an aperture; it can be in between the values. Um, it doesn't just use the set values; it's a stepless aperture. And we also have down on the bottom here how we set the ASA, and the ASA goes from ten all the way through to a whopping two hundred. So, uh, as is common with a lot of these cameras, um, we're spoilt today with the film speeds that we take for granted in these days past. Film was a lot, lot slower. Um, it's why in sort of the Victorian sort of pictures you see them, they're just a little bit blurred because people move. Sometimes the exposure was seconds. And I can remember a wedding photographer saying that when they were doing uh, some of their pictures, they used to measure the exposure time in cigarettes. So an exposure would be something like time taken to smoke a cigarette or two cigarettes. And it's why people were always sat down in pictures. They had metal things behind their head to try and keep them still because film was, was so slow. So we're quite spoilt today with our fast films. But this only goes up to 200. So... Uh, we're going to have a problem, I think. I'm not, no, we're not because it's 100, so that's cool. So, I'm going to set this uh, dial, push it down away from the, 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 the gauge, and then it, it'll move. So, I'm shooting 100, and I want to give it a stop of overexposure. So, I'm going to set it to 50. There we go. In the bottom of the viewfinder, there's a scale um, that goes across, showing the aperture. And there's a needle that moves, depending on it, that tells you the aperture that the camera has selected. And there's an over and under exposure zone in red, so you know whether you can take a picture or not. So, quite a simple camera, but yeah, it should be quite effective for taking pictures. Right. I've got a roll of Foma Pan, my usual cheap film. This is Foma Pan Classic uh, 100. And this is uh, reasonably fresh, this film. I think, yeah, 2021. So, yeah, it's a fresh, fresh film. So... Standard loading, this bit will lift up, this part will drop in and hook into that. Uh, it's already pretty tight, that's good. And then we have to find the uh, start of the um, shutter button is a bit strange. So this comes across. And we push our film into there. And that's an easy loading system, actually. That's very good. We just close the back, if you can see that. It, uh, it loads really easily. Close the back up. As you know, I like to... Um, to see that part going around, so 
It's the usual. One, two, three. That folds over and then like I said we have to set this counter to the number of exposures. Here's a start. But it's actually we've got 36 left. So that goes on to there. And there you have it. The Mamiya EE Merit. And there is an EE Merit Super, um, which is the one that has the rangefinder. This is a non rangefinder version. Zone focusing. I'm not quite sure how well that's going to work because it doesn't really give you any distances. It just says close up groups and scenes. So it be interesting to see <laughs> what comes out in focus and what doesn't. And set that to auto. We set our, uh, our ASA and uh, there we go, ready to shoot. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this interesting. Another nice old camera. Approaching 60 years old and by the look of it still working. Um, yeah, very nice indeed. And you can see by how Mamiya built their reputation. This was before they built SLRs and things like the RBs and the sort of cameras that everybody knows from Mamiya. Um, but yeah, very nice. Made in Japan, very good quality. And yeah, we'll see what the results are like with this film. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe. Comments, questions, queries and everything down below. All that good stuff. And I hope to see you in the next one.